This podcast was made possible by Harler Print Co. Harler Print Co. specializes in large format vinyl products as well as a wide range of other printing services. This includes stickers, labels, magnets, business cards, flyers, posters, and even shirts and garments. For more information, you can check out their website at www.harlerprintco.com. The link will be in the description. Now on to the show. Hey y'all, welcome to the Tutties and Buddies podcast, a weekly or a daily Double Down Network podcast. I am your co-host Cody and I'm joined tonight with my other co-host. Nate, what's up boys? How you guys doing tonight? Well, I mean, if you're talking to me, tired as hell already. Uh, I feel you, it's been a long day over here too. Yeah, it's been a long work-filled and drama-filled day for me. Mm. Well, so I've had the same thing. Bunch of family stuff, all the good stuff. But you know what men do when they have family issues and work issues? They turn Break to down sports. and cry. Wow, oh. you really are a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say I'm not, but... <laughs> Uh, so I think today we're gonna be breaking down NFC players that each team needs to like <laughs> piece out, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of guys. I feel like teams need to drop, and uh, with some big news already happening, I'm I don't got much to say for some teams already. Yeah, I got a couple picks here, and I'm like, oh, they already dropped them. Cool, so. You know, it's actually, like, my backups for those are pretty hot takes, so you guys will just have to hear what I have to say about those. Yeah. But today we're going to discuss the NFC teams, so which division do you want to start with? Um, let's start with the NFC South. I feel like we got some fun takes to go on there. Oh, I have some great takes to go on down there. Uh, what team do you want to start with? I'll let you kick it off. I'm going to start with the Saints, because, well... Andres Pete, drop that motherfucker right now. Oh, okay. Starting off with a hot take, really, Andres Pete. I, 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 I don't have him being dropped at all. He is ass, my man. He had, I think he makes thirteen mil a year, and if you look at PFF, I believe he's one of the lowest ranked offensive linemen on the roster. So there's no point in keeping him when you got backups who are play better than him. So uh, I have a really hot take. Uh, I mean, it's not really hot because, like, I think he's going into his last year of contract for the Saints. I have Michael Thomas. All right, so I'm slightly confused on contract situations, if I'll be honest, because I believe he's in free agency this year. I f- Wait, Michael Thomas is in free agency? That's what everybody I see is saying he's going into free agency. So I don't know if that's the Saints plan on releasing him and him going to free agency or if his contract's up. No, he doesn't. Uh, he would have to be released. He His contract goes through the 2024 season. It's Yeah, see, to me, that's a hot take. Michael Thomas, I feel... Should be on the roster, but they definitely needed to fix that, the payment on him, and make a lot of it not hit the salary cap. Yeah, they definitely need to redistribute that. Honestly, if I was looking at Michael Thomas, if I was down there, GM down in the, you know, the bow, or whatever you call it, I don't know. But uh, if I was down there, I would be looking at, like, Telling Michael Thomas, hey, we're going to pay you a million dollars this year. If you do good again, then we'll, you know, up it next year. But we need cap space if we want to try to rebuild right now. Because you guys are in a really weird position where, like, a couple players added and subtracted. You guys could be contenders, at least in the playoff. Maybe not Super Bowl contenders, but you guys could go deep. But, uh, yeah, Michael I mean- Thomas is going to hold you back. Yeah, that's that's the hard part with being in the Saints position that they are, like you said, in that make it or break it cusp of you can make it if you make the right moves or you are going to go 
into a five-year rebuild that you're not going to come out of happy. And not I at all. feel that Michael Thomas isn't, I guess, the hottest take. And being a Saints fan who grew up on Michael Thomas, I feel like I can't release him, if I'll be honest right now. <laughs> so, it's it's a take, but for me, it would be Andres P. You have to get rid of a guy. I mean, I have PFF pulled up, and he out of 77 guards who are ranked, he's 68th. You can't tell me you can't justify dropping him. Well, you're paying him what thirteen and a half million this year? Yeah, somewhere around there. It's that's just outrageous for me to think we are paying him that much. Well, as we'll talk about in a future episode when we get to the AFC players, yeah, I I, I actually have a very similar take. I don't have them cutting him, but I do have them restructuring his contract, especially up in the Browns territory. But um, my, the only other person that I would say the Saints really need to move on from is probably Jameis. But that's like a coin flip. Like, you could move on from him or you could continue with him. It's really up to you. Between him and Andy Dalton, Jameis is the more talented quarterback, but Andy Dalton doesn't get hurt nearly as much. And see, that's the funny thing. Andy's going into free agency, so... Jameis is the only true quarterback we are going to have on the roster, and I think we already um, broke that trust and confidence, and I don't think he's going to want to come back. Yeah, and from what I've heard, uh, Derek Carr actually interviewed with the Panthers today. He did, yeah, um, in, at the Combine, as well as he's supposed to... I think he already met with the Jets and the Saints already, so we have a quarterback there, but... it all based on us um, getting some cap room open. Yeah. But uh, moving on, I actually want to take talk about something that happened today. I have another pick that these this team should move on from. But uh, I woke up early in the uh, morning. There was a uh, move by the Falcons. They dropped Marcus Mariota. I saw that. I And so... I want to ask, what do you think that means that the Falcons are dropping Mariota? Do you think that means they're all in on Desmond Ritter? Or are you thinking they're thinking quarterback in the draft, maybe? See, to be honest, I'm not actually sure. Like Desmond Ritter, he didn't do bad for his four starts. But when he came in and he relieved, it it didn't look pretty. But at the same time, Marcus Mariota didn't really, you know, set him up to succeed down there in in, uh, Atlanta. I kind of think Desmond Ritter is their go-to guy. Um, I don't think he is that guy. I don't think he's that good. But I think that's what they're they're moving towards. What's what's your take on this? Yeah, see, I haven't had a chance to completely look into that because, I mean, it happened, what, five, six hours ago. Um, but my initial take is that I feel like they're going to ride with uh, Desmond Ritter and see what happens with him. Um, I mean, like you said so many times, like, next year's quarterback class is way, way better. So... You know, give Desmond Ritter another year. If you fail miserably, you're at the top of the list to see what which quarterback you can get in the draft next season. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, Atlanta is the one of the weaker of the NFC South teams, if we'll be honest right now. they had a It's really, the weakest, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, their defense was it's like Swiss cheese. has holes everywhere, if we'll be honest here. Um, offensively, they struggled, but they had upside from, like, Cordell Patterson, which he maybe not shouldn't get released, but I feel like he should be on the hot seat for that. Because, I mean, he's a 31, 32-year-old running back, I believe. And, you know, just running backs don't perform like that once they get up in age. So that would be something I'd be a little afraid of. Yeah, so my other take was A.J. Terrell. Oh, you smoked me back on that one, bud. 
See, the only thing that I... The, the reason that I have AJ Terrell is because, you know, he's only played, what, two seasons? Or is he in his third year? Uh, drafted 2020, so it'd be his second full year. Yeah, so he just played his second full year. And this past year, you can literally see the fall-off that he had. He went from, like... 60 tackles down to like 30. Yeah, I mean, is that more on the team or the player himself, do you think? I think it I think it has to do with both because he uh, he didn't record a single interception this past season compared to 2021 where he put up three interceptions and a sack. So, like, 2021, he had a really good year, a really standout year, in my opinion, and I thought he was good. And I still think he's a good cornerback. The only problem that I see is they're paying him a decent amount of money, and I think they could do a lot more with that money than A.J. Terrell. Yeah, but that's his rookie contract. They'll they'll keep him, let him play out his fourth year, and then depending on the fourth year... They'll either give him that fifth-year option or let him go into free agency or come up with a different deal. I think this next season will determine his fate with Atlanta as he is a talented guy. He just, you know, it's going to be a little more inconsistent as we see, at least as of right now. Yeah, like, the the biggest reason why I was saying A.J. Terrell is because he had a massive drop-off compared to the 2021 season. And I think that might actually have something to do with um, crowd regulations. You know, we saw it in the bubble. There were certain players in the NBA bubble that went off because there was no one there. Um, and 2021 in Atlanta, they didn't seat fully until nearly the end of the season. And now they're seating fully all the entire season, all 17 games. And he had half as many tackles and no interceptions. Uh, If you're a good cornerback, you should still at least get one pick. And I want to see what his QB rating allowed was. Um, His 2022 QB pass rating was 115.8. See, he allowed a 115.8. That's that's pretty bad. Because I'm looking at his year-to-year on PFF right now. And 2022, or 2021, excuse me, he had an 82.6% overall grade with an 85.6 cover grade. In comparison to 2022, which was a 61.8 coverage grade, a 20-point drop-off with... I think he had a hundred and so left coverage snaps. So he got worse on less playing time, essentially. And that's exactly why I was like, yeah, he dropped off really hard this year. I mean, if the, if he had kept up what he had done his first two seasons, they would have already given him the extension. So, yeah, they might let him play it out and see if he's worth it. But... If he was really worth it, he would have already gotten his contract extension. Yeah, I can see your point on that. Um, but I still, he's a young player. Let him play out his contract and then go from there, if I'll be honest on that. Yeah. Um, Atlanta doesn't really have too many horrible contracts to me, but... I would say a good drop candidate would be maybe like a Lorenzo Carter. Um, wasn't really all that good. Um, could in the draft especially you'll be able to get some guys who can replace him and be younger. Um, let's see what his contract looks like for me. But um. Yeah, I just don't think he would be a. I think he'd be a good option to drop. As he's making, I mean, three and a half million. He's not really worth that at this point, as he was in the bottom half 
of the PFF ratings. So he would be a decent option. But I mean, really, there's no way you really need a drop. It's more like you just gotta, you're just gonna find better players and have these guys yeah. sit as backups. I mean, the biggest statement that I would have for the Falcons is they don't have top tier players on their team. Like, they have a couple good players. Kyle Pitts, I'm not 100% sure on. Drake London, I'm not 100% sure on. Cordell Patterson, he's proven he's getting old. Um, Desmond yeah. Ritter, he hasn't proven himself yet. They have potential talent. They have proven talent. But the potential talent hasn't shown out. And the proven talent is getting towards its end. So yeah. they got to make a decision on if they're going to try to win now or if they're going to rebuild. And they're in an even more weird spot than the Saints are, to be honest. See, I would say they're not. I feel like they know that they're in a rebuild year. Actually, I got you somebody. Casey Hayward. He needs to get dropped. Okay. That would yeah. make a reasonable pick because he's ranked... 58 out of 118 corners on PFF with a 65.6 cover grade. He's making $6.5 million, and he is 33, 34 years old. He would be a great option to let go, clear up you know, $5, 6000000 million in cap space, and go after somebody big in free agency. Maybe a Darius well, Slay? Yeah, a Darius Slay would be good. But what is their what is their cap space that they have this year? Um, they already have they're projected to have seventy five point four million in cap space. It doesn't ha hurt to have more, my boy. It doesn't hurt to have more. I promise you. <sighs> this is true, but they already have sixty mil almost as we're looking at it right now. So if they do any rearranging. They could do whatever they wanted. That That's for sure. I mean, it really, how they see him, see if he fits in the bigger picture. Are they going to be good in two years where he might be able to still contribute to a team? Or do we want him just to play out a contract? A lot of that's up to see to uh, father time. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's get moving on. Let's move over to the Bucks. Bucks. So, let's get on to the Buccaneers real quick. Leonard Fournette got released by the Bucks today. Oh, oh, I did not see that. He was my number one pick. Yeah, Leonard Fournette needed to go. He was nowhere near as productive as he should have been. Yeah, yeah, I I could agree with that. I think a guy that should actually be released might be more of a um like a Russell Gage type of player. I have Cameron Breakdown to get released. His contract is just eating up way too much money. Cameron Break. Let's go see. What do you know his contract off the top of your head? Uh, not off the top of my head. I do not have that uh, brought up. Let me go see. Six years, forty mil. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah no, he's. Yeah, I mean, for that, no, because they had uh, Kate Ott and uh, Cole Clef coming in. I mean, he, th they both ranked better at the tight end position than Cameron Brait. So, yeah, that would be an excellent cut candidate. Yeah, so that that's what I saw. Mostly, one of the biggest things that I looked for when I was going through this was who's eating up too much money and not being productive? And I just... I, I, I want to pull up Cameron Bright's stats. I want to, like, after Gronk left, there was not going to be anything good. So, Cameron Bright this past year, he had 20 receptions for 174 yards. His longest was 21 yards and no touchdowns. And you're guaranteed at least three mil every year with that guy? No, that guy got to go. I can agree with that one. That that's just horrible at this point. I mean, you guys have they have two young tight ends coming up. That should be plenty for them to be able to 
get you know feel confident moving on from him. Yeah, and he's been with the team since 2014, and his highest receiving his highest years were 2016, 2017, where he still didn't break 700 yards, and he didn't even in one of those years he didn't even break 600 yards. So, you know, I just don't think he's worth his uh, his. I don't think he's worth it. You know, his best season, at least yards per uh, attempt, was his rookie season, and he only had one catch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you brought up a really good guy to release, and I mean, either one of the guys we mentioned, especially for the Bucks, and even Leonard Fournette were all good options to end up getting cut by the team and freeing up some cap space that's desperately needed for this team right now. All right, all right. You guys know me. You guys know I love my hot takes. <clears throat> the Buccaneers are going to try to go get Winston and try for – I'm not exactly sure what they're going to send to the Saints, uh, whether it be picks, but the Bucks don't really have good picks. Um, they're going to try to go for Winston. Winston was proven with the Bucks. If they put him on a squad where he also has, you know – a veteran Julio Jones, I think he could put up close to 4,500 again. So the Bucks are going to try to go all in on that, but where they, f- if they were going to do that, this is my thing. Leonard Fournette would probably need to be a part of that package. So I think they lost a lot of value by doing that. And I just don't see the value on their team. All their good players on defense are, you know, going to free agency. I'm pretty sure Shaq Barrett is planning on retiring. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know you've talked about Jameis going to the Bucks. I mean, that would be a funny thing, and I hope you're wrong, honestly. <laughs> but, you know, that's you know, I... to be seen. Ugh. You got any other hot takes for the the Bucks? Um, not yet. Give me a little. Give me a couple more months, and I'll, let me see how this roster turns out. And I might hit you with something dumb. You know, honestly, I kind of want to do this closer towards the start of the season, just so we can like have a whole episode of like, oh fuck these guys. Oh, you'll hear a lot of that coming from me. I promise. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm really excited for this show. Once the season gets kicked back up, I think this is gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun to do this. But I guess that brings us to our last team in the NFC South, the Carolina Panthers. Um, I'm looking at this right now, and I'm off the top of my head, I might be thinking of an Xavier Woods. Uh, he r- ranked in the bottom third of safeties right now and he's making projected six million dollars in cap to the towards a cap that's just not a really good combo to be having right now Especially so i have a is- hot take for you yeah yeah so dj moore is going to free agency okay. or wait is he I don't looking at his contract. I don't believe so. Oh no! He, they extended him through twenty twenty five. I did not know that. Holy crap! <laughs> but they are paying him seventy three million over four years. Yeah, I mean he's their number one wide receiver. He's gonna get that number one wide receiver money. See, but here's the issue. Here, here here's my issue. I want I want to take you back to a little game against Atlanta halfway through the season, okay? PJ Walker throws DJ Moore the biggest, nicest hail mary of a dime. He throws his helmet off, acts like a college player, gets a penalty, they miss the extra point, and they end up losing the game. If they if he had not done that, they would have beat the Bucks out and they would have been the top team in the NFC South no matter what. They would have gone to the playoffs. Um I still don't think that's any reason to uh, let a player go, if I'll be honest on that. 
Okay, well, He's you are the one player. who's dick-sucking Michael Thomas. No, he is not. He definitely is not. Derek Brown, J.C. Horn, Brian Burns. Name the uh, best wide receiver Jeremy on the Panthers Chin. roster. Name the best wide receiver okay, on the Panthers okay. roster. Okay, yeah? first of all... Okay you, okay, you got me there. They don't have receivers, but... What is DJ Moore going to do? He's going to end up making them lose games rather than win games like we've seen. If you do something like that, I'm sorry. I'm the no bullshit kind of guy. You're gone. Fuck out of here. You cost us a playoff appearance. And is that towards the roster or the coaching? Because coaching was in turmoil this year. As you let go of the guy you hired, you have an assist or a... um head coach fall in and then you hire you know you're probably going to get a new head coach that's all probably just coaching at that point and discipline not being instilled into this team <sighs> man I'm not 100% sure like <laughs> look who they hired though they hired Frank Reich as their new head coach and he did good in, in uh, Indianapolis he put him to a playoff as a playoff contender. I mean, he, yeah, brought him to the playoffs. You know what? You know what? Here, I'm gonna pull this up. Just I want to I want to look up his his. Oh God, his coaching record. Sorry. Oh, okay. So he is above 500. Never mind. Yeah, he's he's a. Decent coach, not great. I will not say he's a great coach, but he—he's only is barely good. above five hundred, you know. Yeah, but you have to look at the time he had in Indianapolis and how he had a revolving door of quarterbacks. No coach is going to be able to win like that. I mean, and somehow he still came out on top, you know. So like, I heard a little bird on the tweeter today on the Twitter. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I don't even remember the source. So I'm not 100% sure about how much I actually believe this. But I heard that uh, Marcus Mariota uh, is also interviewing with the Panthers. Not today, but soon. Um, I... How would I feel about that, if we're going to be honest? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't I, care if Bitch Boy goes there. See, I don't. Think That's my that, nickname for Marcus Mariota, Bitch Boy. Yeah, I mean, Mariota's—he's not going to do anything special there. I mean, he might just be a bridge quarterback. If they don't like anybody in this year's draft, hey, give him a one-year deal. Hey, get us one win and get out the door next season. See, so. dude, I. Dude, I literally, I, I've been thinking about it, and I'm like, Anthony Richardson might be the best quarterback in the draft. I went back and I looked at all of his, all of his highlights. Just, I watched the good, the bad, the ugly, and the absolute beautiful. And when it's absolutely beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. He reminds me of a young Cam Newton. And, you know, if Carolina wants to... You know, next season's wide receiver class is a lot better. Cut DJ Moore. This is this, this is if if I were the Panthers, this is what I would do. Here's my hot take: Cut DJ Moore. Sign Brian Burns. Get him another four-year uh, contract. Okay. You have Derek Brown coming up in a year or two, who's going to be a free agent. You have uh, Jeremy Chin, who you need to re-sign because he's even better than Justin Simmons. He's coming up in a year or two. You need to get those guys re-signed. Get rid of DJ Moore. Just cut him. Uh, draft Anthony Richardson. Let him play under P.J. Walker. If P.J. Walker can't succeed this year, throw him in there. I guarantee you he will do good if he has half a season to watch and to develop. I think he'll do amazing. If you look at Anthony Richardson's passing... It is just as accurate as C.J. Stroud's. He drops absolute dimes. And his arm is stronger. 
and he's a bigger body. So on those fourth and ones, fourth and twos, you might actually get an extra yard or two on that fourth down QB sneak. Go for him. People are sleeping on this guy. Um, You're just preaching to the choir. I'm going to be honest here. I mean, I've told you, he he is not my number two, not my number one. He's my number three. But the highest upside player, it's him. But everybody else has a little bit higher of a floor than Anthony does. But he has the highest ceiling. He has a higher ceiling, but will we be able to get that? Do I want to? Do I want to get the surefire guy who's going to be, you know, a good starting quarterback who will be in the league for 15, 20 years? Or okay, do I want to get the guy? First of all, you're a dumbass. None of these guys are surefire. Come on, man. Bryce Young, he's the closest thing to surefire we're going to get since I don't know, like a Joe Burrow or an Andrew Luck. Yeah, is that the face you're going to give me? Yeah, Andrew Luck? Really, you're going to drop Andrew Luck. <laughs> yes. Uh, I need I need another beer to continue this. <laughs> Go get one. We're Anyways. already 30 minutes into this one. <laughs> oh, goodness. Should we just wrap this up and uh, get on to the next episode? Yeah, I'm really thinking we just cover too much time on this one. <laughs> Uh, alrighty, with that being said, guys, hey, go check out our website. We have merchandise popping up there now. You guys can find all of our episodes for all of our shows on there at ddoubledownnetwork.com. Check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Twitter. We also have a Facebook at Daily Double Down Network now. So go check it out. If you like the show, leave a like, leave a subscribe. If you guys go over to the Patreon, you guys will be able to pick out an entire topic for yourself if you subscribe to the top tier we'll cover it for a whole episode and talk about what you want with that being said i'm cody nate peace out boys Ooh.